Right. <clears throat> it says here, Torcello, an island in the north of the lagoon. Oh, we know that. Right, sites to see, the Cathedral of Santa Maria della Sunta, the Santa Fosca Church, the Ponte del Diavolo. Mm-hmm. Go and see them. Torcello has a civilized community long before its neighbor, Venice, over yonder, started to rise to prominence. Laura. Oh, read it later. Well, this feels quite civilized, doesn't it? Torcello hasn't lost its knack. I'd say that it was... Laura. What is it? Um, don't look now. Don't Look Now by Daphne du Maurier. Dramatised for radio by Ronald Frame with Anna Chancellor as Laura and Michael Feast as John. Don't Look Now. What is it? There are a couple of old girls, two tables away. They're trying to hypnotise me. What? No, no, don't look. They're right behind you. If you turn round, it'll be too obvious. Oh, I'll drop my napkin. Oldest trick in the book. Have a look. Oh. Well, what do you make of them? Not two old girls at all. They're two male twins in drag. <laughs> Chianti, signora. Chianti. Pretend to... <laughs> Choke, then they won't notice. Go and have a swig. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Better, darling? Uh, yes. Yes, thank you, sweetheart. Are you still looking? Yep. Rather rude, is it not? You know what it is? They're criminals doing the sights of Europe, changing sex at each stop. <laughs> Told your story all again. Twin sisters here on Torcello, twin brothers tomorrow in Venice. Oh, please. Or tonight, even, parading arm in arm across the Piazza San Marco, don't you think? Don't look, remember? Just a matter of switching clothes and wigs. Jewel thieves or murderers? Oh, murderers, definitely. They're looking again. Are they? Why, oh, why have they picked on me? Oh, John, look at it. What? Coffee, signora. Oh, grazie. Yes, signore. Uh, thanks. Finish with the fruit? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Uh, yeah, you can take it away. Yes, signore. Can't think why we didn't notice them when we arrived. They stand out to high heaven. That gang of Americans masked them, and the bearded man with a monocle. Oh, yeah. Who looked like a spy. <laughs> I'll have to turn round. No, don't. They're twins, I think. Oh, God, the one with the white hair. She's got her eye on me again. A gimlet eye. I know, I know, I know. A compact mirror. Well, what do you see? I think it's me they're looking at, not you. No. Oh, thank heaven I left my pearls with the hotel manager. Just a little bit of eyeliner adjustment. The thing is, we've got them wrong. They're not murderers or thieves. They're a couple of pathetic, old, retired... School mistresses on holiday. They've saved up all their lives to visit Venice. They've come from some place with a name like Walla Banger in Australia, and they're 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 called um, they're called Tilly and Tiny. At last, she's beginning to get over it. If I can just keep this going, let's joke, let's fantasize about other people, the other guests, the culture vultures. Then everything will fall back into place. Life will be like it was before. The wound will heal. And she'll forget. You know, that, that that really was very good, that lunch. I really did enjoy it. Thank you, God. Thank you. One of them is going to the loo. Do you suppose she, or he, is going to change her wig? I'll follow her and find out. She may have a suitcase tucked away in there. She's going, she's going to switch her clothes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're OK? Mm -hmm. I'm glad. Is she on her way? About to pass our table any moment. The other one shut her eyes, as if she's asleep. Going past now. What age? Sixties. Oh, nice shoes. What? Lace-ups, grey stockings. I used to have a name for that kind of hair. Mm -hmm. Eaton Crop. A golfer. Dog shows, I think. Supposing when I find myself in the toilet, she starts to strip. Depends on what's revealed. If she's a I make a bolt for it. She might have a hypodermic syringe concealed and want to knock you out before you reach the door. 
I simply must not laugh. Whatever you do, don't look at me when I come back, especially if we come out together. Arrivederci. Just wish me luck. She'll get over it, Mr. Bennett. They all get over it in time, and you have the boy. I know, but she meant everything, Christy. She always did, right from the start. I don't know why. I suppose it was the difference in age. A boy of school age, and a tough one at that. He's someone in his own right, not a baby of five. Meningitis is no respecter. Laura adored her. Johnny and I were nowhere. Give her time. Give her time. And anyway, you're both young still. There'll be others. Another daughter. Who's the old girl looking at? Damn you. All right, bloody stare at me then. Two can play at that game. I'll smile too. Hmm. Waiter, Bill, please. What's so bloody fascinating you've got to stare? The signore. Right, thanks. You enjoy your lunch? Yes, very satisfactory. Let me see. Uh, service. Uh, fine. Thanks. Grazie, signore. You will come again. Who knows? Come on, Laura. How long's that? Ten minutes. Longer. So what happened? I know, the old dame stripped of her smalls. Then she suggested you do the same. Then the manager, he burst in on you both. Shock, horror. Now the reputation of the hotel is damaged. He's telling you worse will follow unless... Of course, it's all been a little exercise in blackmail, don't you see? You, me, the two old biddies, we're taken in a police launch back to Venice for questioning. God, it's been quarter of an hour. Oh, come on, come on. Laura? No, lace-ups and grey stockings. Back you go, sis is waiting. What's that, a Scottish accent? Hoots, mon. Up you get, sis. Oh, hang on to me. Sloshed? No, all she had was mineral water. Better get going too, or they'll think Laura's walked out on me. Well, you took your time, I must say. Ten minutes. No longer. What's the matter? Laura, what's happened? I've got to... Uh, I've to sit down. Darling, what is it? You OK? You, you're not ill? No, 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 no. no. Well, what then? It's quite wonderful. The most wonderful thing that could possibly be. She isn't dead. She's still with us. That's why they kept staring at us. Those two sisters, they could see Christine. Oh, God, I've been dreading this. She's going off her head. What do I do? How do I cope? Laura, sweet, shall we go? I've paid the bill. We can go and look at the cathedral and stroll around, and then it'll be time to take off in that launch again for Venice, yes? John, love, I've got to tell you what happened. I followed her, as, as planned, into the toilet place, and she was combing her hair, and I went into the loo. And when I came out and washed my hands in the basin, she was washing hers in the next one. Suddenly, she turned and she said to me, she's Scottish, she said... Don't be unhappy anymore. My sister has seen your little girl. She was sitting between you and your husband, laughing. Darling, I, I thought I was going to faint. I nearly did. Laura. Luckily, there was a chair and I sat down and the woman bent over me and she patted my head. I'm not sure what word she used exactly, but she said something about the moment of truth and joy being as sharp as a sword. Laura, look. But not to be afraid. All's well, but the sisters' vision was so strong that they knew I had to be told, and Christine wanted it. Oh, John, don't look like that. I swear I'm not making it up. This is what she told me. It's all true. Laura, darling, of course I believe you, only it's a sort of shock, and I'm upset because you're upset. No, 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 I'm not upset. Well, you're not? No, I'm happy. So happy, but I can't put the feelings into words. You know what it's been like all these weeks at home and everywhere we've been on holiday, though I, I, I've been trying to hide it from you. Now it's lifted, because I know, I just know, that woman was right. Oh, God, how awful of me. I, I've forgotten their name, but she did tell me. You see, the thing is, she's a, she's a retired doctor. They've come from Edinburgh, and the one who saw Christine, who, who, who was staring at you, you thought, but she went blind. 
a few years ago. She studied the occult all her life. She's very, very psychic, but it's only since going blind that she's really seen things like a medium. Oh, Laura. They had the most wonderful experiences, the blind one. She described Christine to her sister. She she even got the blue and white dress, you know, you know, the one with the little puff sleeves, the one she wore at her birthday party. She said Christine was smiling happily. Oh, darling. Be so happy, I think I'm gonna cry. I'm all right now, you see. You don't have to worry now. Oh, hell. If we hadn't come here for lunch. Just chance. A flick of a coin between Torcello and driving to Padua, and we had to choose Torcello. Neither of us has to worry about anything anymore. You didn't arrange to meet them again or anything, did you? Oh, no, darling, why should I? I mean, there's nothing more that they could tell me. The sister, she, she, she's had her wonderful vision, and that was that. Anyway, they're moving on. Funnily enough, it's a bit like our original game. They're going all over the place before they head back to Scotland. Only I said it was Australia, didn't I? <laughs> Lots of Scots down under, of course. <laughs> oh, the old dears. Anything less like murderers or jewel thieves. <laughs> Come on, we've come to Torcello and we must see the cathedral. John? Sorry? Have you seen the mosaics? Oh, yes. They hit you in the eye a bit, don't they? Oh, that's amazing, isn't it? What? Over there, the virgin and child. She is so... Sad? No. Remote. On the fresco somewhere. The blessed and the damned. It's them. The sisters. The blind one. She's looking at me. Right through me. It says somewhere in the guidebook. Hmm. Let's have a look. Somewhere. Where are they? They've gone. Vanished. How dare they? The old fools. Playing their medium's tricks on me. Frauds. They do this for a living, I bet. Touring the world. And make everyone they meet feel uncomfortable. Give them half a chance, they'd have been getting money out of Laura. Anything. John. What? Isn't she beautiful? She's not sad at all. Happy. Serene. Who? The Madonna. She's, she, she, she's got this magic quality. It gets to you, does Don't you feel it too? I suppose so. I don't know. There, there are too many people around. What's that got to do with it? You are funny. Ha uh ha. -huh. Peculiar. Well, all right. Let's get away from them. But I want to buy some postcards anyway. Oh, come on, there's plenty of time for postcards. Let's explore a bit. Explore? Get away from folk, I mean. It's just a canal. Yes. A canal canal. Where does it go? It's muddy. We can't sit. The guidebook says we should oh, just... Oh, forget go. the book. Sit down. Come on. How romantic. It did for our honeymoon. Not Torcello. That was Venice. It's the wrong time of day for sightseeing. Look. There's a rat. Don't! It's cruel, poor thing. They survive. Do you think Christine is sitting here beside us? I expect so. If you feel she is. The woman said she was looking so happy sitting beside us. She was smiling. Come on. Let's go back to Venice. like home, isn't it? <laughs> what? This room, ours for just now. While we're here, we bring it to life. And then when we're gone, it no longer exists. Fades into anonymity. 
goodness. What was this on? No. Now at last it's the moment to make love. Laura? Yes? Do you think... About dinner, it's amazing how on holiday you just go from one no, meal... No, no, not about dinner. If you want to try somewhere else... I meant about us. Us? Sexy us. You know, like on our honeymoon. Now that we're back here... Uh-huh. Well? It has been ages. Too long. Do you think it's time? Go on. Please. Surprise me. <sighs> Surprise you? Uh-huh. Is. Oh, these earrings. I'm not terribly hungry. After all that exercise? <laughs> Should we just be dull in eating the dining room here? God, no. With all those dreary couples at the other tables, I'm ravenous. <laughs> you certainly are. I want to get sloshed. Not bright lights and music, surely. No, no, some small, dark, intimate cave, rather sinister, full of lovers with other people's wives. Mm, we all know what that means. You'll spot some Italian lovely of 16 and smirk at her throughout dinner while I'm stuck high and dry with some ghastly man's broad back. Let's walk. Let's walk and work up an appetite for our gigantic meal. Your gigantic meal. <laughs> Everyone walks. Nowhere in particular. I like that. Mm, the air's so warm and soft. Look at those heels! <laughs> oh, but they're young. They certainly are. Now pay attention or you're going to fall in. I can take care of myself. Oh, yeah. Once you start, the trouble is walking in Venice becomes compulsive. Just over the next bridge you say, and then there's another. Now, I'm sure there aren't any restaurants down there. No? Well, we're almost at those public gardens, you know, where they hold the Biennale. Are we? Let's turn back. It's OK. I know there's a restaurant somewhere near that church, San Zaccaria. There's a little alleyway that leads to I it. I tell you what, look, if we go down here by the arsenal and cross the bridge at the end and head left, we'll come upon uh, San Zaccaria from the other side. Uh, we did it the other morning. Yes, but it was daylight then. We may lose our way. It's not very well lit. Don't fuss. I have an instinct for these things. So that's the Fondamenta and the bridge just before the arsenal and the church, San... Martino, I think. And now... Two canals, two streets. Oh, John! Which one was it we took yesterday? See, we're lost, just like I said. Nonsense. It's the left-hand one. I remember the little bridge. Yesterday it was so different. The sun, the washing lines, the birds in cages. Fast asleep on their little perches. It's because the shutters are shut and the water stinks. The boats, they're the same. But they're not. Are they? They look like... Like what? Coffins or something. <laughs> they do. You're in a very imaginative mood tonight. I don't remember this bridge. John! Yes? Where are you going? The alley. I don't like the look of it. There's a lamp ahead, see? I, I know exactly where we are. The Greek quarter's somewhere down there, yes. What was that? Some drunk or other. No. Come on. We ought to call the police. Oh, for God's sake, it's not Piccadilly Circus. I'm off. It's giving me the creeps, yes. Someone's there. Who is it? A child. A little girl. Yes. Five or six. I don't know, maybe older. A coat with a pixie hood. Running. She's running away from the drunk. Down on the boats now, jumping. One, two. She's trying to escape. She's getting away. Three. Oh! She nearly fell. On again. Four. What's she doing now? The rope. She, she's bending down to loosen the rope. The boat's swinging round to the other side of the canal. And now she jumps onto the steps. Where's she gone? Her cellar or basement. Or... She, she's vanished into the house. The boat swings back. 
Why is she running away? There's some danger. Something to do with a crime. My God, some terrible danger. Look out! John? What? What are you doing? I can't go on on my own. The alley goes two ways. Sorry. I'm coming. If I could see properly, there weren't any more cries, were there? No, no, nothing. I, I told you it was some drunk. Come on. Wait a minute. I, I think we take the one on the right. Uh, the, the Greek quarter should be that away. The Church of San Giorgio is somewhere over there. It's a maze, this. I don't want to go back to that bridge. Keep up. Keep the faith. Uh-huh. Look for a church. Where? We'll find it. That's what we're looking for. Meanwhile, we go round and round in circles. People, look. And if I'm not mistaken, a church. Oh, saved. I told you, San Zaccaria. All those arches on the front. Founded at last. Thank God. Your restaurant can't be far. Oh, I don't know. Ristorante, in blue light, see? Oh, yes. I is this your place? Oh, search me. Who cares? Let's just go in and get ourselves fed. A table for two? Oh, yes, please. Yes, this way, please. Are we so British? Madame? Thank you. So, a mm. uh, menu? Two very large Camparas with soda, then we'll study your menu. Yes, sir. Menu for the lady? I was hoping you'd choose. I'll eat anything. All right, um... Seppi con nero, gamberi... Vongole. Italian. Mm, what's it? The clientele. Must be good. Oh, no, it's them. They followed us inside. They must have done. Why the hell come here in the whole of Venice? Did Laura say to them? Or they said to her, a small restaurant near San Zaccaria, my dear. We go there sometimes for dinner. San Zaccaria. Sorry? You said a, a restaurant near San Zaccaria. Uh, this will be fine. Bring the drinks. The bloody drinks. Give us something to do. You know, I was thinking we really ought to go to the garage tomorrow and get the car and do that drive to Padua. Mm -hmm. We could lunch in Padua, see the cathedral and touch St. Anthony's tomb, and do the Giotto frescoes, come back by those villas along the Brenta. The guidebook bangs on about them. It's no use. No use. Look. How extraordinary. Really amazing. What's that? Well, look who it is. My wonderful old twins. Oh, they've seen us. They're staring over here. Look, there's my friend. Phony old bitch she is. You've both followed us here. Oh, darling, I must go and speak to them just to tell them how happy I've been all day thanks to them. Oh, for heaven's sake. Look, here are the drinks. We haven't even ordered yet. Surely you can wait until later, until we've eaten. Oh, I won't be a moment. And anyway, I want scampi. Nothing first. I told you, I wasn't hungry. Don't speak to them. Don't shake their hands. Don't sit down. Chit-chat. Smiley smiles, just like bosom friends. No, neither of you is surprised. Why would you be? You knew you'd find us here. All right, then I will get sloshed. Uh, you're ready to order, sir? Um, one of... This, uh, I can't pronounce it. Uh, Porcado. Yeah, and a plate of scampi. Bread? Uh, Pietro, pane. Salad, sir? I... no, uh, but we'll have a bottle of suave with ice. Certainly, sir. And... Oh, you might get me another Campari and soda while you're at it, uh, thanks. <clears throat> Presto. No problem, sir. Thank you. And thank you, you old crows, for ruining our evening. More spiritualist tosh. And poor dead little Christine sharing our table, is she? You can see her, can you? So damn stupid, she'd have been tucked up in bed hours ago. Got you there, haven't I? Doesn't stop you, though. Don't just lap it up, Laura. The other one's staring at me, old witch. How do I get away from you? You're phony. You're not blind at all. Frauds. Yes, you could be men in drag. And you're after Laura for your unspeakable ends.
Scampi? There. And Porcedo? <laughs> By process of deduction. The lady does not come? She does not. Could you tell her, please, her Scampi will get cold? Yes, sir. What the hell is this? Wrong choice. Oh, you're back. I told him to tell you. I hope the Scampi's better than this. No, it looks fine. Sir? No, you're right. It's not for me. Bring me a green salad, will you? Yes. Insalati di finocchi e cipriori. Maybe anyway it'll be the same. <clears throat> same cuisine starts to... Darling, I, I know you won't believe it, and, and it's rather frightening in a way, but after they left the restaurant in Torcello, the sisters went to the cathedral as we did, although we didn't see them in the crowd, and the blind one, she... She had another vision. She said Christine was trying to tell her something about us, that, that, that we'd be in danger if we stayed in Venice. Christine wanted us to go away as soon as possible. Well, well, why don't you say anything? Because you are perfectly right. I don't believe it. Quite frankly, I think your old sisters are a couple of freaks. At the very least, they're obviously unbalanced. And I'm sorry if this hurts you, but the fact is they found a sucker in you. You're being unfair, they're genuine. I know they are. I, I, I just know it. They were completely sincere. What they were saying... All right, granted, they're sincere, but that doesn't make them well balanced. Honestly, darling, you meet that old girl for ten minutes in a loo. She tells you she sees Christine sitting beside us. Well, anyone with a gift for telepathy could read your unconscious mind in an instant. And then she's so pleased with her success, she has another wee rapture and wants to boot us out of Venice. Well, I'm sorry, but to hell with it. I knew you'd take it like this. I told them you would. They said... They're going to run our lives for us. We consult them when we want to eat, get up, go to bed. They said not to worry. Oh, did they? As long as we left Venice tomorrow, everything would be all right. Oh, for God's sake. After all, we, we've seen the main sights here. I don't mind going on somewhere else. And if we stayed... I, I know it sounds silly, but I should have a nasty sort of nagging feeling inside me and I should keep thinking of darling Christine being unhappy and trying to tell us to go. Right, that settles it. Go, we will. I suggest we clear off to the hotel straight away and one reception when leaving in the morning. Have you had enough? Oh, dear. Don't take it like that. Look, why not come over and meet them and then, and then they can explain about the vision to you? Perhaps you take it seriously then, especially as you're the one it really concerns. Me? Christine is more worried about you than she is about me. What? And the extraordinary thing is, the blind sister says you're psychic and you don't know it. You're somehow on rapport with the unknown and, and, and I'm not. Well, that's final. I'm psychic, am I? Fine. My psychic intuition tells me to get the hell out of this restaurant now, at once. We can decide what to do about leaving Venice when we get back to the hotel. Yes, all right. A bill, please. Very psychical, that. What? If you ever see so much spaghetti on their plates, like a couple of hoovers. So, this will cover it. Thank you, sir. Right, you ready? I'm going to say goodbye to them first. Just as you like. Yes. Signor Barrett? Uh, yes? A telegram for you, Signore. Oh, right, thanks. God. John? The lift? Y yes. What is it? This. Well, tell me. From a school. Johnny's under observation. Suspected appendicitis. Oh, no. In City Hospital, uh, no cause for alarm, but surgeon... It's the surgeon? Uh, ...thought wise to advise you. Appendicitis. Suspected. My boy. Poor Johnny. Well, this decides it, doesn't it? Here's the proof. We have to leave Venice because we're going home. It's Johnny who's in danger, not us. This is what Christine was trying to tell the twins. <sighs> Uh, I'm, I'm not in a breakfast mood. You'll need your strength. You've told reception? Yes. When will the school phone? Any time. I don't know how we're going to get everything back into the suitcases. It's OK. We'll see if you can manage. I'll have some coffee. Can you turn the radio off? I thought it might be a distraction. Well, it's not. There's a car train, isn't there? Yes, it goes from Milan. Where to? Calais. Early season, that is. The headmaster said there was no urgency. I know. Well, don't you believe him? Yes, if he says so. Poor Johnny. I'll take this and I'll have my shower now. 
Well, how far is it to Milan? I'm not sure. There's a map behind you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I see. Laura. Can I just... It's Mrs Hill again. It, excuse me, Mrs Hill. Her husband is in class. She says the hospital told her Johnny had a restless night and the surgeon may have to operate, but he doesn't want to unless it's absolutely necessary. Right, right. Mrs Bennett. Sorry, Mrs Hill. They've taken x-rays and the appendix is in a tricky position. It's not awfully straightforward. In here, could I have a word? Mrs Bennett. Uh, no, it's um, John Bennett. Uh, good morning to you. Oh, Mr Bennett, I'm so sorry this may spoil your plans, but both Charles and I felt you ought to be told and that you might feel rather easier if you were on the spot. Yes. Johnny's very plucky, but of course he has some fever. Uh, this, this isn't unusual, the surgeon says, in the circumstances. Sometimes an appendix gets displaced, so he says, and, and this makes it more complicated. He's going to decide about operating this evening. Yes, of course, we quite understand. Please do tell your wife not to worry too much. The hospital is excellent, a very nice staff, and we have every confidence in the surgeon. Yes, yes. Um, my wife... If, if we can't get the car on the train, I can fly. They're sure to be able to find me a seat on the plane, then at least one of us would be there this evening. Yeah, th thank you very much, Mrs Hill. Um, we'll manage to get back all right. I think the line is starting to... Johnny's in good hands, I'm sure. I assure you that everything... Thank is... your husband for us. I'm afraid I didn't catch that. Goodbye, Mrs Hill. Oh, God, what a bloody mess. Johnny? All this junk, getting it packed. What now? <clears throat> Hello? Uh, Signor Bennett, concierge. Signor Bennett? Uh, it's, the, it's the concierge, yes? Oh, I have booked a sleeper for you and Signora Bennett for tonight. With the car? Uh, with the car, yes, Signore. Yeah, let me speak to him. Look, um, could, could you book a seat on a London plane, lunchtime or early afternoon? Just just one seat. One of us has to get home this evening. My husband could follow with the car tomorrow. Yeah, hang on. No need for panic station. Surely 24 hours wouldn't make all that difference. It mightn't to you, but it does to me. I've lost one child and I'm not going to lose another. All right, all right. Yeah, just one seat. Heathrow or Gatwick. Can you call me back as soon as you know, please? Thank you. If you like, we could both fly. No, 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 that really would be absurd. As long as I'm there this evening and you follow by train, that's all that matters. Besides, we'll need the car going backwards and forwards to the hospital. And our luggage, we can't just go off and leave it here. No, I guess not. Right, I'm going downstairs to stand over the porter chap. They always make more effort if you're actually on the spot. Everything I want is packed. I only need my overnight bag and you can bring everything else in the car. Hello? Darling, it couldn't have worked out better. The porter has got me on a charter flight, leaves Venice at 11. A special motor launch thing leaves San Marco in 10 minutes. Some passengers on the charter flight cancelled and I'll be in Gatwick in less than four hours, three, three and a half or something. I'll be right down. I feel I'm on my way now. And I'll get off to Milan with the car. You'll find a hotel? Yes. What do you do tomorrow? God knows. Think about... Poor Johnny. I'll describe this to him. How lovely everything looks after the rain. Washed clean. Just like the postcards. Oh, look at them. Sorry? The tourists. Not a care in the world except to enjoy the day. Lucky old then. We'll come back. Someday. I'll ring you tonight from Milan. The hills will give you a bed, I suppose. And if you're at the hospital, they'll let me have the latest news. This must be your charter party. You're welcome to them. You must be the lady joining us for the homeward flight. Welcome aboard and to the Union of Fellowship. We are all delighted to make your acquaintance. Sorry we had to see it for happy tour. Oh, that's us. <laughs> Do you think they're going to break into hymns? Take care of yourself, hubby. Call me tonight. I'll be able to see you. Your red coat. So, Reese. Whatever. Can't mistake you. Bye. Bye. Mr. Bennett here, room 322. I'm running a little late. I'll be down in half an hour, get some lunch. Can someone collect the luggage for me then, please? Certainly, sir. Thanks. She's airborne now. 
first psychics, darling, and now you're Methodist ministers. How popular you are. You would like to order now, signore? Yes, I have to be quick, I'm afraid. Rapido, veloce. Yes, signore. To catch the ferry. Uh, your luggage is waiting for you, signore. What would you recommend? Well, pasta would be quick, sir. All right. Um, the fettuccine alla manonara. Very good, sir. It's gone already. The hotel. The palace is the little red house where D'Annunzio lived. And the garden. Our house, you said, Laura. We'll come back someday. On that other ferry, coming into Venice. One day, perhaps, we will. God! It's her! On the ferry there! Laura! It's her! In the red coat! Laura! And the sisters by her side. Excuse me, please. It's my wife. My wife. The sisters are talking to her, calming her, hand on her arm. What's wrong, Laura? That look, you're distressed. Why are you so sad? Laura! She can't hear me. Laura! What the hell's happened? It was her, Laura, and the twins. Okay, the flight didn't take off. Why didn't you phone me at the hotel? What are those bloody two doing with you? You ran into them at the airport or something. Or it's just coincidence, right? What's upsetting you? They've upset you. No flight. You're going to the hotel to find me. To come with me to Milan. The hotel. The hotel. I'm coming back, Laura. I'll turn back. I've got to phone. I've got to phone. Tell your friends to go and burn in hell. Look, uh, hello, reception. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. There's been some awful muddle. I'm sorry, this is Signor Bennett. Uh, I'm across at the terminal. My wife is on her way back to the hotel. I've just seen her with two friends on one of the ferries into Venice. Uh, will you explain to her, please? Explain, sir? Will you tell her to wait? I'm coming back on the next ferry. Just keep her there, please. I'll, I'll be as quick as I can. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Uh, Benetto? Bennett. I'll be, I'll, I'll be as quick as I can. Thank you. Is that my luggage? Signor Benny's luggage? Uh, yes. Look, let's go to the garage. Si, signore. I'll get it handed over. They can keep it for an hour, can't they? Si, signore. I'll go and collect my wife at the hotel and bring her back. Mr. Benny. Has my wife arrived? Uh, Renato? Uh, no, sir, not yet. How weird. Are you sure? Absolutely certain, sir. I've been here ever since you telephoned me at... Uh, 1.45. I have not left the desk. I just don't understand it. She, she was on one of the Vaporettos passing by the Academia. She would have landed at San Marco about five minutes later and come on here. I don't know, sir. The signora was with friends, did you say? Yes, well, acquaintances. Uh, two ladies we met at Torcello yesterday. What's the time? After three. Uh, it, it should have taken her moments. Perhaps the signora went with them to the hotel instead. Do you know where they are staying? No, I haven't the slightest idea. What's more, I don't even know the names of the two ladies. But anyway, why go to their hotel and not here? Maybe that's her now. No. Uh, Mr. Bennett, i tell you what I will do. I will telephone the airport and check about the flight. Then at least we will get somewhere. Yes, do that. We may as well know what happened there. What a bloody mix-up. Laura must have known I'd be setting off after lunch, if not before. So wouldn't she have telephoned me at once when she got to the airport to let me know the flight was cancelled? What's he talking to them about? Come on! It's more mysterious than ever, sir. The flight took off on schedule with a full complement of passengers. As far as I could tell me, there was no hitch. The signora must simply have changed her mind. Changed her mind? But why on earth should she do that? She was so anxious to be home tonight. You know how ladies can be, sir. Your wife may have thought that, after all, she would prefer to take the train to Milan with you. Is it possible that you made a mistake and it was not the signora that you saw on the Vaporetto? Oh, no, it was my wife, I assure you. 
She was wearing a red coat. I saw her as plainly as I can see you. I I'd swear on my life to her. It is unfortunate that we do not know the name of the two ladies or the hotel where they are staying. You say you met these ladies at Torcello yesterday? Yes, but, but only briefly. They weren't staying there, I'm sure. We saw them at dinner in Venice later, as it happens. Excuse me, new guests. New guests? Oh, yes. Go ahead, Renato. I just can't hang around. Even if she does turn up, can we make Milan by this evening? I should be looking. I, I might see her walking with these ladies in the Piazza San Marco anywhere. If she arrives while I'm out, will you explain? Indeed, yes. It is very worrying for you, Mr. Bennett. But perhaps it would be best if we booked you in here tonight. Perhaps, yes. I don't know. Maybe. Where is she? What if, what if all this has been prearranged? Laura never intended to catch the plane. Oh, God, that's impossible. Last night she made an assignation with the sisters. I'm going paranoid. No, no, they met her at the airport, trotted out one of their psychic visions. The plane was going to crash. She must return with them here to Venice. And Laura, in her frame of mind, she felt they must be right. Swallowed it all and no questions asked. OK, granted all that. Why she not come to the hotel? It's four. No, half past nearly. There's the whole of Venice, or across the Zatiri, or the Judecca. It's hopeless. They could be kidnappers. Those women have got hold of Laura. They're keeping her somewhere. I've got to report this. A consulate. Where is it? Or, or, or a police station. Castura. Excuse me. Does anyone here speak English? Upstairs. To the right. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. An English voice. Come and sit down. Thanks. Room at the inn. We had to wait half an hour. They're ringing round. So they say. What a country. They wouldn't leave us like this at home. No, they would not. What's your problem? My wife had a bag pinch at one of those shops in the Merceria. Awful it's been. She simply put it down one moment to look at something and you'd hardly credit it. The next moment it had gone. Gone? I say it was a sneak thief. She insists it was the girl behind the counter. Oh, must have been. Stands to reason. Who's to say? His eye ties are all alike. Anyway, I'm certain we shan't get it back. More's the pity. What have you lost? A uh, suitcase stolen. Yes. Had some important papers in it. What a to-do. Like I said, these eye ties, they're all alike. Old Musso knew how to deal with them. Too many communists around these days. That's true. The trouble is, they're not going to bother with our troubles much. Not with this murderer at large. They're all out looking for him. Murderer? What murderer? Oh, don't tell me you've not heard about it. No. It's all you hear about in Venice. Yeah, it's been in all the papers, on the radio, even in the English rags. Oh. A grisly business, too. One woman found with her throat slit last week. A tourist, too. And some old chap discovered with the same sort of knife wound. A slasher. Just this morning, too. Terrible, isn't it? They think it must be a maniac. There doesn't seem to be any motive. How long did it take them to work that out? Hmm. <laughs> oh, well, we're off tomorrow anyway. Can't say we mind, do we, dear? No. Venice has gone downhill since we were here last. And then this bag business is really the limit. Uh, come through now, please. Ah. Mm. I bet we don't get any satisfaction. Mm. What am I doing here? What's the point? Laura, she's no longer in Venice. She's disappeared with those diabolical sisters. Forever, maybe. She'll never be found. The women are crooks. They're men, and they lure their victims to some appalling fate. Perhaps they're the murderers. Who's going to suspect two elderly dames, so respectable-looking, holed up in their second-rate pensioni? No, no, this is the start of paranoia. This is the way people go off their heads. Half past six. Better pack this in right now. I'll phone the school about Johnny. Oh, the usual claptrap. They'll do what they can. Not much hope. None. So many foreigners in Venice, all of them thieves. Thieves. Oh, no, not the locals. You don't blame them. Wouldn't pay them to steal from customers, would it, now? <laughs> well, I hope you get more joy than we did. Good luck, mate. You'll need it, too. Name, address, passport, length of stay in Venice, etc. And now it's the questions. OK, so what do you want to know? This will take forever. There's the story of the two sisters, you see. 
Die twee zusters. De meeting at the restaurant. Which restaurant was it? The first restaurant. There were other restaurants. And then there was Laura's condition. Condition. Because of Christine. Christine, who's Christine? Was. And then the telegram about Johnny. Johnny. Oh, this is god awful. He wants me to go on about the flight, me setting off, and Laura coming back. There was no argument between you. Argument? No difference of opinion. No. We were in complete agreement. My only regret was I, I couldn't fly back with her. Perhaps your wife may have had an attack of amnesia. Amnesia? And the two ladies, they were a link, and she went with them for support. You have described them very clearly. I think they should not be too difficult to trace. I'm sorry to have taken up so much of your time, especially as I gather the police have their hands full hunting down this murderer. Ah, that. We hope to have the murderer under lock and key very soon. Meanwhile, I suggest you should return to your hotel, Signor Bennett, and we will get in touch with you as soon as we have news. Uh, uh, signore? Is this the best you can do? We don't like the room, Signore. No singles left with bathrooms? No, we don't have any. Uh, it's all right. I'll be fine. Ask them to send up a double whiskey, will you? Yes, yeah, si, Signore. God, I need a wash. Come on, city of bloody water. Oh. There's ice. Uh, si, signore. Ice. Good, thanks. Uh, will there be anything else, signore? No, that'll be all, thanks. Si, signore. Oh. Bugger. Hello? Your connection, Mr. Bennett. Thank you. Hello? Mr. Bennett, it's Angela Hill here. Mrs. Hill. All is well. Johnny has had his operation. The surgeon decided to do it midday rather than wait, and it was completely successful. Johnny is going to be all right, so you don't have to worry anymore. Thank God. I know. We're all so relieved. Now, I'll get off the line, and you can speak to your wife. Darling? Darling, you there? I'm here. I can't hear you very well, but never mind. As Mrs. Hill told you, all is well. Such a nice surgeon and a very sweet sister on Johnny's floor. The Hills are being wonderful. I've got their spare room, and it's only a short taxi drive to the hospital. I shall go to bed as soon as we've had dinner, because I'm a bit fagged with the flight and the anxiety. How, how, how was the drive to Milan? Where are you staying? I'm not in Milan. I'm still in Venice. Still in Venice? What on earth for? Wouldn't the car start? I can't explain. There was a stupid sort of mix-up. What sort of mix-up? You weren't in a crash? No, no, nothing like that. Your voice sounds very slurred. You didn't go out and get pissed. I thought... I thought I saw you in a vaporetto with those two sisters. But how could you have seen me with the sisters? You knew I went to the airport. <laughs> Darling, you're an idiot. You seem to have got those two poor old dears on the brain. I hope you didn't say anything to Mrs. Hill just now. No. Well, what are you going to do? You'll catch the train at Milan tomorrow, won't you? Yes. Yes, of course. I didn't see Laura, I hallucinated. God, Johnny needs a surgeon and I need psychoanalysis. Vitello a la masala and a half bottle of Merlot. Si, signora. She's safe. The nightmare's behind us. Laura's with the hills. It's a dull, quiet evening for her. Then early to bed. She'll see Johnny tomorrow. He's safe, too. No more worries. Just have to explain and apologize to the manager at the hotel. Eccolo. I was certain a signor would not be far away. 
Things are moving, signore. The two ladies have been traced and they very kindly agreed to accompany the police to the Questura. If you will go there at once, this officer will escort you. Mr. Bennett, you follow me? Uh, I've given everyone a lot of trouble. Uh, I meant to tell you before I went out to dinner, but you weren't at the desk. The fact is, I've contacted my wife. I don't understand. She did take the flight to London after all. I've spoken to her on the phone. It was all a huge mistake. The signora is in London. The lady said there'd be nowhere. The, the shops in the morning. So, who was it you saw on the Vaporetto, Mr. Bennett? A very curious mistake on my part. I, I still can't make sense of it myself. Obviously, I did not see either my wife or the two ladies. Many people now, they go looking. The ladies, all this work. At such a time we have now. This is crazy. Look, I shall go with you to the headquarters and I shall apologise in person to the police inspector and to the ladies. Entrare. Hello. I... Signorine, this is Signor Bennett. Ah, oh, ladies. There has been a terrible mistake. I don't know how to explain to you both. It's all my fault, mine entirely. The police are not to blame. <laughs> Please, don't get up. We don't understand. We said goodnight to your wife last night at dinner and we haven't seen her since. No, we haven't. The police came to our pensione more than an hour ago and they told us your wife was missing and you had filed a complaint against us. My sister is not very strong. She was most put out, Mr Bennett. A mistake. A dreadful mistake. So, this document is all lies? You do not speak the truth? I believed it to be true at the time. I could have sworn in a court of law that I saw my wife with these two ladies on a vaporetto in the Grand Canal this afternoon. Now I realise I was mistaken. We have not been near the Grand Canal all day. Not even on foot. No. We made a few purchases in the Mercheria this morning and remained indoors all afternoon. My sister was a little unwell. I'm afraid I was. I have told the police inspector this a dozen times. And the people at the pensione will corroborate our story. Yes, yes, they will. And the signora? What happened to the signora? The signora, my wife, is safe in England. I talked to her on the phone just after seven. She did get her flight and is now staying with friends. Then who you see on the vaporetto in the red coat? And if not the signorine here, then what signorine? My eyes deceived me. I think I see my wife and these ladies, but no, it was not so. My wife on plane, these ladies in pensione all the time. So, all this work for nothing. Hotels and pensione search for the signorine and the missing signora inglese when here we have plenty, plenty other things to do. You make a mistake. You are perhaps too much vino at mezzogiorno and you see hundred signori in red coats in hundred vaporetti. And you, signorine, you wish to make complaint against this person? Oh, no, no, indeed. Not at all. I quite see it was all a mistake. Our only wish is to return at once to our pensione. You a very lucky man. This signorine could file complaint against you. Very serious matter. I'm sure I'll do anything in my power. Please don't think of it. No, no. We wouldn't hear of such a thing. Not at all, Mr. Bennett. I hope we needn't take up any more of your valuable time. A policeman will walk with you to the pensione. I'll come with you too. I want to explain exactly what happened. What a strange affair. I swear it's the truth as I know it. Uh, what is it, Ailey? Uh, Don't go upsetting uh, yourself. I have to say something to the gentleman. Yes, I'm listening. You did see us, and your wife too. But not today. You saw us in the future. In the future? Come along, dear. You know, you're very tired and I want to get you home. She's psychic. Your wife told you, I believe, but I don't want her to go into a trance here in the street. We're there, aren't we? The pensione. Is this where you're staying? Yes. I know it's nothing much from the outside, but it's clean and comfortable. Some friends recommended it. Where is that policeman fellow? Grazie. We'll be all right now. Grazie tanto. Buona notte. Buona notte. Will you come in, Mr Bennett? I'm sure we can find you some tea, or perhaps you would prefer coffee. No, really, I must get back to the hotel. Oh, 
must you? I'm making an early start in the morning. I, I just want to make quite sure you do understand what happened and that you forgive me. There is nothing to forgive. Nothing to forgive. It's one of the many examples of second sight that my sister and I have experienced time and time again. And I should very much like to record it for our files, if you will permit it. Yes, of course. I do find it hard to understand myself. Uh, it's never happened to me before. Not consciously, perhaps. So many things happened to us of which we're not aware. My sister felt you had psychic understanding. She told your wife. Ah! Hey. Oh. 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 What, what is it? The child! The child! I can see the child! What's happening? We must get her inside. It's all right. She's not ill. It's, it's how a trance starts. Let me help. I can't help you. Oh, excuse me, senor. Oh, oh, the owner. Don't you worry, Mr. Bennett. The senora and I can manage. I think you had better go. Sometimes you're sick after these turns. God help her. If we can just support her. Yes, senora. Oh, my God. Whose fault was that? Poor old girl. Dragged a police HQ, put through an interrogation, then a psychic fit on top of it all. More like epilepsy. Where the hell am I? All these turnings. Wait a minute, that church, is there a name? San Giovanni in Bragora. We went in there. So, over there, that must be the Riva degli Schiavoni and the lagoon... And bright lights and civilization. God, it's dark. We came from the Chiavoni. There was an alley. This one. No. It was when we came walking after dinner, but the other way. God, was it only yesterday? So it's quicker if I just go on. There's that little bridge, and the arsenal would be on my left, yes, and the street to the Riva degli thingami on my right, and that'll be easier than retracing my steps. I'll only get lost in that maze of back streets. It's her again. The little girl. The pixie hood. She's making for the bridge. Someone's chasing her. A man. He's hiding now. Flattened himself against a wall. Thinks she doesn't see him. He's the drunk. That yell we heard. The murders in the newspaper. The maniac. Or maybe he's just some sort of a relative. I should get away, just turn and run, forget. But what's going to happen to her? Who's she got to protect her? She's coming this way. She hasn't seen me. I won't let him hurt you. It's all right. Doesn't she have any parents? Where's she gone now? Through that door. I can't see. Stairs. Spiral stairs. Stop! Stop! We know where you are! I can't go back now. This is it. We're in this together. The child and me. He'll get us both. Unless we can bolt a door. Come back! Where is she now? She must be in this room. I'm here with you. It's all right. Where is she? By the window. Crouching, because that bastard's after her. God, what a place. Mattress and rags. Poor soul. It's all right. It's all right. I'm here. Turn round. Turn round so I can see you. Go on. The pixie hood, it, it's fallen down. Now turn round. <laughs> Who are you? Big square head, not a child. Grey hair hanging down, not sobbing anymore. Grinning, a dwarf, grinning at me, nodding her head up and down, up and down. A crazy midget, a mad woman. She's insane. Oh my God! Help me! Open up! Where is here? 
A crazy, a lunatic. Christ, help me. I can see everything. She's in her sleeve. What she... Oh, no. Oh, no. She's got a knife. She's aiming it. She's going to... She's throwing it at me. All that fury. <laughs> Everything. Everything. Yes, She's flushed my throat. I'm stumbling, falling. My hands, my red hands. <laughs> this stupid, sticky, red mess. I can see everything. Seeing them, they're in the Vaporetto. We'll come back, someday. Not today. Not tomorrow. The day after, yes. Laura is sad, crying. She's so sad. They're here to bring me back. They're bringing back my body. Oh, God. Oh, God. God, what a bloody silly way to die. In Don't Look Now, John was played by Michael Feast and Laura by Anna Chancellor. Other parts were played by Ewan Bailey, Sean Baker, Colette O'Neill, Carl Prekop and Carolyn Pickles. Don't Look Now was dramatized for radio by Ronald Frame from the short story by Daphne du Maurier and directed by Patrick Rayner.